Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll be covering the alternating series estimation theorem, or sometimes abbreviated as ASET for short. So how does this theorem work? So the alternating series estimation theorem is essentially an estimate for the sum of an alternating series to a desired amount of accuracy. So how does this work? So let's just write down the statement of the theorem. So here it is. So if S is equal to the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n minus 1 times bn. So if S is the sum of an alternating series that satisfies the following. So that satisfies Okay, so the first condition is the terms are non-negative, so it's bigger than or equal to zero, and it's less than or equal to bn. So in other words, if this is if this thing is decreasing, and the second condition is if the limit as n approaches infinity of bn is equal to zero. So this is very similar to the altering series test. So if the alter if you have an altering series that satisfies these conditions, which well it will be. Then, now this part is a bit confusing, the remainder in the sum, so the difference between the real sum and the nth partial sum, so basically I have the exact sum of a series minus however many finite terms of I sum up, that will always give me some kind of remainder or the estimate that's left over or the error that's left over. And this will always be less than or equal to one more term up evaluated in the series. Intuitively, this should kind of make sense. I mean, if I take the original sum and I subtract n partial terms from it or n terms from the series, this is always going to be less than or equal to the next term in the se in the series, intuitively speaking, that should make sense because if I add up a bunch of terms, I'll always have one more term more than that, which will well this term will always be less than or equal to. There's a more rigorous proof to this, but I don't want to give away too much of the proof because I feel like you'll get lost in the intricacies of the details, and that's not really my intention to kind of do in this video here. But intuitively, you should be able to see why this works. Because if I have an exact sum and I subtract, let's say, S5, that sh it should be kind of obvious, or I shouldn't say obvious, but it should be at least somewhat intuitively clear that no matter what this difference is, it's always going to be less than or equal to the next term in the series. So it's always going to be less than or equal to B6. Because B6 will be the next term in the series. And that's always going to be bigger than the sum of the previous terms. So intuitively, that should make sense. Now, how do we actually use this theorem, though? So let's go ahead and do several examples. And hopefully at the end, you'll see how this kind of works. So let's go ahead and do the first example. So the first example is the following. So approximate. the sum of the series. Okay. So this will be the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times 1 over n squared to two decimal places. Now, this, now, once again, this is an approximation. The reason this is useful is because it lets us calculate how many terms we have to sum up for an infinite series so that we get in a series that we have to find the minimum number of terms to add up, which is going to be less than or equal to some desired amount of error. So basically, we, so as another way to say that, 
if I add up a certain number of terms, it's going to be less than or equal to a particular error. And that's why this is kind of a useful theorem to use. So how does this, you know, work? So let's just write down a few things. We know that bn is equal to 1 over n squared. It should be very, it should be very clear that this is clearly a decreasing sequence. I mean, you have 1 over n squared. It's, that's clearly decreasing. And the second condition is that, once again, you have to limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n squared is equal to 0. I'm not going to be doing these conditions. You can check these yourself for the next few examples, but I will do it here. Okay, so what's going on here? So according to the alternating series estimation, estimation theorem, so by ASET, we have the following. So we have that the remainder in the difference between the sum and the end partial sum is less than or equal to b n plus 1. And we want this remainder to be less than 0 0.001. So we want to make sure that this thing, this remainder, is less than 0 0.001. Well, according to the altering series estimation theorem, we know that the remainder is always going to be less than or equal to the next term in the sequence. Okay, what does this mean? This means that by definition, we know that 1 over n plus 1, all squared, is going to be less than 0 0.01. I'm going to skip the solving of this, but if you go ahead and solve this, you'll get n is bigger than 9. So if n is bigger than 9, that means we need to sum up at least 10 terms. So therefore, we need at least 10 terms in order to ensure that we get the sum that's required. So we just go ahead and write this down. Okay, so if you go ahead and sum this all up, we get summation from n equals 1 to 10 of negative 1 to the power of n minus 1 over times 1 plus n squared. So if we sum up the first 10 terms, we'll get 1 minus 1 over 4, plus 1 over 9, minus 1 over 16, plus 1 over 25, minus 1 over 36, plus 1 over 49. Now, this is normally something you wouldn't have to do, but I'm just doing it for the sake of completeness. Minus 1 over 64, plus 1 over 81, minus 1 over 100. And that's going to give you 0 0.81. This is the minimum number of terms you have to add up so that the error is to, so that the remainder of the sum is less than 0 0.01. So if you don't, so what is this telling you? That means if you take the difference between the next term and this, and the 10th term, the difference will be less than 0 0.01. The term before that, so if you sum up the first nine terms, the difference between the ninth term and the eighth term will not be 0 0.01. So this kind of satisfies the idea that, okay, so we need to sum up at least 10 terms. So the difference between the 10th term and the ninth term will be less than 0 0.01. So they'll differ by less than 0 0.01. Very interesting. So let's go ahead and do another example. So example. So we'll be doing the same example, but we'll be doing this with a slightly different kind of series. So this one will involve a little bit of trigonometry. Okay, so here is the series. So we'll just go ahead and write this down. So instead of the original, it's gonna be sine of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared. Okay, so we want to approximate some of this series to two decimal places. And let's just make this very clear, actually, and change the wording a little bit. So approximate some of the series so that the error in the sum is less than 0 
Okay, so let me just kind of reword this a little bit. So how many terms? Terms of the series should we add up? So that the error Okay, so basically I want to figure out how many terms do I want to add up in this series so that the error in the sum is less than 0 0.001. Okay, so first of all, we can't quite use the altering series as the to term on this thing because negative 1 to the n plus 1 is not outside the sign. That's okay because we know that sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. That means by definition, sine of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared, by definition, is equal to negative 1 to the n plus 1 sine of 1 over n squared. Okay, well, once again, let's go ahead and investigate this a little bit. So my bn term in this case is equal to sine of 1 over n squared. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. So clearly, this is decreasing. It might be sine does oscillate back and forth, but because of this 1 over n squared, it's going to be decreasing. You can prove this rigorously using derivatives, but I'm not going to. And if I take the limit of this thing, so the limit as n approaches infinity of sine of 1 over n squared, well, that's going to be equal to 0. So the port of the conditions hold. So, same idea. So now, we have that by the altering series estimation theorem, we know that R of n is going to be less than or equal to B of n plus 1. And that must be less than 0 0.001. Meaning that by definition, we have the following. So we have sine of 1 over n plus 1 all squared is less than 0 0.001. Okay, so if you go ahead and solve this, we'll get 1 over n plus 1 all squared is less than the arc sine of 0 0.001. But then this implies that if I go ahead and solve this, you'll get n is bigger than 30.622, which implies n is bigger than or equal to 31. So that means we need to add up at least 31 terms in order for error to be less than 0.001 in this particular series. Okay, so with that, let's do the next example. So it's going to be the same question, except the series and the question is going to be a little bit different. But the process, you'll see very quickly, is going to be, rep is going to be repetitive. It's going to be almost exactly the same every single time. Okay, so let's go ahead and do write down this series. So it's going to be negative 1 to the power of n over 1 plus 2 to the n. The error is the same, and the summation is going from 1 to infinity. So we're good to go. So once again, a n is equal to negative 1 to the n over 1 plus 2 to the n. But this is the same thing as negative 1 to the n times 1 over. 1 plus 2 to the power of n. Once again, this is decreasing. That should be obvious because there's nothing in the numerator, and all the only terms that grow are in the denominator, so this is clearly decreasing. And the limit of this thing is indeed 0. Okay. So that means by definition, we have the following situation. So once again, the remainder in the series is going to be less than or equal to bn plus 1, which is 0 0.001. Okay, so if we go ahead and write this down, we'll get the following. So we'll get 1 over 1 plus 2 to the n plus 1 
is less than 1 over 1,000. So this one is a bit harder to deal with, but still not too bad. So if you kind of move everything over, we'll get the following. So just to be very clear, we can convert this into a fraction. That's how I did that. So here, if you cross multiply this thing over, you'll get 1,000 is less than 1 plus 2 to the n plus 1. So we get 999 is less than 2 to the n plus 1. So if you take the natural log of both sides, we'll get n plus 1 times the natural log of 2. And then, of course, if you go ahead and move everything over, we'll get natural log of 999 over the natural log of 2 minus 1 is less than n, which implies that 8.96 is greater than n. That means at least 9 terms, lies, at least 9 terms are needed. So we're good to go. And we have one more example to cover. So let's go ahead and do that one more example. Okay, so once again, same question, but this time we're gonna have a different series. So let me just go ahead and copy and paste that question. So it's going to be negative 1 to the n over n factorial this time. And the summation is going to be from 0 to infinity. Not like it matters because it's kind of irre irrelevant in this question. And, you want, and the error is the same. Okay. So once again, a n is equal to negative 1 to the power of n over n factorial, which is equal to negative, which is equal to negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n factorial. This will be less than 0. Point, so let me just make that very clear. So this implies that, by definition, we have, according to the remainder estimation theorem, so alternating schemes estimation theorem, we have the following. We have r of n is less than or equal to b of n plus 1 which must be less than 0 0.001. I don't think, I don't, once again, this is clearly decreasing because the factorials are going to go ahead much larger. So it's, this is clearly decreasing. And you can use, you don't really need to justify this rigorously, but if you take the limit of this thing and plug in infinity, well, the, the factorial is going to grow without bound. So you're going to get zero when you do the limit. So there's that. Okay, now let's keep going with this thing. So by definition, we'll get 1 over n plus 1 factorial is less than 0 0.001. Okay, so if you go ahead and cross multiply everything over, you'll get 1,000 is less than n plus 1 factorial. Here's the thing. You can't really solve this using standard algebraic techniques. So the easiest way to do this is to use trial and error. So if we would do we would first try four then five and then we at six we would get 5040 so n equals six we get 5040 okay but this implies that 5040 is definitely bigger than 1000 five isn't going to work you'll see five falls a little bit short of that so that means we need at least six terms so therefore at least six terms are needed. And that's it. So that covers all the examples I wanted to go over. And that also covers the end of the video. So if you have any questions about any of the examples or the altering series estimation tour um, in general, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. But otherwise, this really helped you. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I look forward to really appreciate it. Thank you all so much and have a great day.